Hello, my name's Dave, Crazy Dave, and today I'd like to look at some of the interesting properties of water. Now, water can only exist on Earth because of our atmospheric pressure. If you take away the pressure, the water will boil or evaporate. It's cold boil. As you can see, by lifting this plunger, this piston, I cause a partial vacuum. And as soon as the pressure is low enough, the water boils at ambient temperature. Interestingly, the effort to pull the plunger doesn't increase once the water has started to evaporate because the water expands approximately 1600 to 1, filling the available space. As this tube is 16 millimeter diameter bore, it gives a surface area on the piston of approximately two square centimeters. And the load required to make enough vacuum to turn the water to vapor is approximately four and a half kilos, which is nine kilos per square centimeter, creating a partial vacuum but if the tube is filled with just dry air, the vacuum gets stronger and stronger the further away the piston is pulled. So what's fascinating me is you can stretch air and you can stretch water, but you can compress air, but you can't compress water. To demonstrate this, I have a small weighted balloon in a tube of water, which floats until I put some pressure on the water, which squeezes the balloon so it's no longer buoyant and sinks. You may not be aware, but water is highly flammable and a hazard can occur when standard drain cleaner and silver paper are added to water which causes oxidization and again breaking the hydrogen bond by stripping the oxygen from the hydrogen I'm only using caustic soda to speed up the operation the same scenario could occur with a rusty nail in salt water or an old anchor chain in a boat locker. These hydrogen bubbles are now highly flammable. This volatile vapour is easily ignited by the smallest spark, a PP3 battery and a piece of wire wool is all that's required. A hazardous atmosphere is created when water is exposed to electricity or corroded metals. For this reason I would recommend that all electrical equipment is protected by a suitable fire extinguisher containing a non-conductive extinguishing medium. Magnesium is not easily ignited but once on fire it will burn at a very high temperature in excess of 2000 degrees centigrade. Some manufacturers are recommending a liquid extinguishing agent, but in my experiences, this has proved useless, if not dangerous. This could be because the extreme heat of magnesium will cause the liquid to boil, expanding it to a steam and disturbing the magnesium particle. If the liquid is water-based, the effect could be even worse as the extreme heat of magnesium 
which will cause the hydrogen bond of the water to break, releasing hydrogen and oxygen, which are both highly flammable. If left undisturbed, magnesium or titanium will eventually burn out, so the risk is relevant to the quantities involved. Typically, magnesium or titanium swarf will burn quite slowly if, if undisturbed. But if blown or agitated, they can react quite violently. When machining magnesium or titanium, it's imperative that the cutting oil is turned off in the event of ignition. In my experience, the only way to control titanium and magnesium fires is with special Class D powder. Although this doesn't in the normal sense extinguish the fire, it will blanket it and hold it long enough to allow the material to cool below its auto ignition temperature. However, care must be taken not to disturb the powder during this process as reignition could occur. Having allowed time to fully cool, small particles of unburnt magnesium can be found, confirming that the magnesium had been extinguished. <laughs>